Let's do it. I'm pumped. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am John. Uh, I am the marketing manager here at Spotlight Branding. I'm Jana. I am the brand strategist here at Spotlight Branding. Yeah. And so uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Spotlight Branding, uh, we focus um, on solo and small firm attorneys. Um, we do internet marketing, build websites, uh, blogs, social media videos, email newsletters, um, and it's all designed to uh, send more clients your way, increase your referrals, but attract better clients. And so, um, yeah, I think uh, I think that's it. Stick around uh, okay. to the end. Uh, we've got a special offer uh, for those of you who stick it out with us. So um, yeah, so let's uh, let's dive in. Let's do it. All right. So number one. And uh, the, the law firm strategies that we think is great for 2020 is starting a podcast. Um, it is, it's one of those things that is just absolutely exploding as a, as a medium. And, you know, a lot of people are consuming podcasts, you know, like on their commutes, during their lunch break, even while they just sit at work and, and just kind of pound away at whatever they're doing. Um, 90 million people. Are listening to podcasts on a monthly basis. That is a huge number of people. And honestly, uh, making a podcast is really easy. Uh, shameless plug, we have uh, our own podcast here, the Law Firm Marketing Minute. Uh, I'm the host of that. Um, episodes are really pretty short. It's only like, usually like five to seven minutes. Um, you know, it comes out weekly. It's a little, <laughs> little dose of marketing inspiration for you. So um, if you haven't subscribed to that yet, you definitely want to check that out. It's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, pretty much anywhere you can find podcasts. But um, for you as an attorney, you know, a podcast is a great way to show off your expertise and, and to dive into legal topics that your audience doesn't quite know about. Um, you know, and, and you'll find that once you get started, once you get talking, you know, you can fill 15, 20, 30 minutes, maybe even an hour of content just talking about what you know best. And, um, you know, probably the biggest thing is that having your own podcast is a lot easier than you think it is. You know, um, little peek behind the scenes. I mean, we record our podcast with just an iPhone and then we upload it and it goes out. And that's really all you need to do. Now, we've put a little more effort into ours. We have a logo, we've got music beds you know, a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more, but, you know, you can easily do that as an attorney, um, you know, and especially if you have like a, an assistant in your office, all you have to do is just record yourself talking for a while and then hand it off and have them upload it. And it goes a long way toward building uh, that authority and that credibility a a around your brand as an attorney. Anything you wanted to add to that? No, that was really good. Um, I, I think, you know, as far as sprucing it up a bit, there's some really good programs like Fiverr or Upwork if you want someone to do a voiceover. Like ours has a voiceover on it that explains what it is. And you can add some music to the beginning and the end to make it a little bit more jazzy. Um, so that's always an option. Um, but, yeah, no, I think we should be a good job. Yeah. Cool. All right. Podcast. On to the next one. Doing it. Tapping into your email list. Ooh, okay, I like this one. Um, yes, so your email list is arguably the most underutilized tool in your firm. Um, I, you know, part of what I do every day is just talk to attorneys um, about what they're doing in terms of marketing. And a lot of you, um, you guys tell me that you do all this networking. So you go to these events, you meet people, you get their business cards. But once you have all these people, even past clients or people who make inquiries, you don't really like, they don't really do anything with this list. They just have it sitting there, but they're not keeping in touch with people as well as they should. Um, and here's why that's a big mistake. Um, there was a study from Texas Tech School of Law that said about 83% of your clients are willing to send you referrals, yet only 29% actually do. Um, so missing out on approximately two thirds of the yeah. referrals that you should be getting. Did major in math, did marketing. Um, so just by staying in touch with people with something as simple and as inexpensive as an email newsletter is crucial. It, and it's so, so underutilized. People don't realize yeah. the power of it. Yeah. And, and honestly, you know, you probably know as a business owner that you should be keeping in touch with everyone that you meet because you know that, 
you know, whether it's your reputation that's on the line or you just want to keep a steady stream of business and repeat business coming in, you know, you need to keep in touch with them. But we are just bombarded with information every day that, you know, even though you may remember that client, chances are they're not going to remember who you are. And so that's why it's so important to just create those consistent touch points. And an email newsletter is such an easy way to do that. And I, I mean, we have clients who tell us all the time that, you know, they send out an email newsletter and they get multiple requests for business, whether it's coming from a referral or it's someone saying, wow, I didn't know you did that here. Please do this for me as well. So, you know, you could you could definitely be missing out on, you know, five, six figures if your retainer is that high of, of business just by just because you're not keeping in touch with everyone on your on your list. Mm-hmm. Agree. Yeah, I worked with. Um, I bought a house. It was a couple years ago. Um, and the attorney that like did my closing, literally just a couple months later, I could not. And still to this day, cannot tell you the name of this guy. I haven't heard from him since. Yeah. He was so wonderful. He was very kind, but yeah. I don't remember his name. Yeah, I don't remember mine either. Yeah, yeah. and um, yours was really recent. Yeah, mine was uh, mine was like six months ago, <laughs> and I haven't heard from him. And yeah, hopefully that's not an like not a thing among all real estate attorneys. If mm-hmm. some of you out there are real estate attorneys, but. Um, either way, you know, it's important to keep in touch with everybody. So next one, dive into video. That, that's a dive. I'm diving. Yeah. Sorry about her. She's, anyway. Um, so 81% of businesses, we're going to have fun with this. Excuse our awkwardness. I don't know, I don't know if you will. Um, but yeah, 81% of businesses use video as a marketing tool, which means uh, that if you are not using video at this point as part of your marketing, you are behind the eight ball. Um, it is such an integral part of your marketing strategy. I know for me, as an example, when I first kind of like before I was even in the legal marketing industry, I had this idea that every lawyer out there was just this scary, intimidating, mm-hmm. money hungry, just terrible person. And now that I've been, no offense. no offense, because second part of that is now that I've been working in the industry for a while, I've I found that you guys are just just normal people and you want to help people and solve problems. You know, you're not terrible or scary or anything like that. And one thing that really breaks that barrier is doing videos. And so uh, if you're familiar with us in any way, you know that we like the FAQ style point and shoot videos. Um, you know, it's a really simple way for you to not only show off your expertise, you know, just answering a question that you get on a regular basis, but it, it goes a long way towards breaking down that barrier and showing that you're just a person that's just, you're in a field that can help people. And, and that's what, that's what you can do. Mm -hmm. And it goes a long way in, you know, building up that trust like factor. And so if, you know, I, I go onto an attorney's website and I, I have these questions already in my head about you know what the process would look like. Say maybe it's like family law, for instance. I'm I'm going through this situation and then I find this video like library of you answering the exact questions I have. You know, you're right in front of the camera, you're warm, you're personable. It it goes such a long way and um, we like to say almost pre-qualifying people. So when they come in for the consultation, they feel like they know you um, and it just makes them that more likely to want to work with you, um, knowing that you're gonna be able to help them out. Yeah. Yeah, shout out spot for sources. <laughs> yeah. All right. Number four, get behind the scenes. So, yeah. Oh, sure. yeah, sure. Yes. Um, so if you follow us on Instagram, another shameless little plug, yeah. um, you've probably seen plenty of photos and videos of us behind the scenes. It's probably a lot of ping pong, um, probably a lot of fun team outing. We like to share that sort of thing. Um, but it's great for people to see that, you know, kind of going off that last one, knowing that, um, you know, that you're not this intimidating attorney who's scary and authoritative. I mean, you, you definitely have authority in your field, but you're not, you know, this person they should be scared of. You're just a person who wants to help them out. You have fun at the office. Um, and so sharing photos of that sort of thing is really great on social media. Um, so yeah, birthdays, team activities, volunteer work that you do. Um, again, ping pong, highly recommend getting a table if you're able. It goes a long way in office morale. Yes. Um, it makes for some really great Instagram videos. Um, yeah. So yeah, anything like that. Um, if you have someone that you know on your team who's able to take those videos and photos for you, um, you can repurpose them. Um, it really it it goes a long way. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and like she said, you know, it kind of goes back to the last point with the videos. 
you know, it just, it's another way to break down that barrier, you know, that people may have this idea that your office is just some stuffy kind of weird smelling place, just full of paperwork and books. And it's probably not. I mean, we have a, a, an attorney across the hall from us in our Shut building. Up, in. Yeah. In. And <laughs> he, like, they have like really cool lighting, cool furniture, decorations. Like he put in a lot of work to make his office feel like a, a an inviting and relaxing place and you know if you've put that same kind of investment in your office it makes a ton of sense to show it off whether it's on social media or you know some other means so yeah yeah okay. cool. all right next one like network um just because we are in a very digital centered age and you know even though we are i guess a digital marketing company mm -hmm. there is still a ton of value and getting out there and networking and meeting people and developing those big business relationships that can be beneficial for, you know, sending you more business. Um, you know, there's, I, I've kind of noticed that, you know, some attorneys feel like that, you know, their marketing should just have like this little easy button where they can just sit back and not do anything. And I can tell you from experience and, and our most successful clients can tell you that the ones that still go out there and put in the work and and keep you know doing what they need to do to develop their business see the bigger returns on the rest of their marketing and so you know if you've got chamber of commerce events uh, some other like local networking you know events get out there and and start introducing yourself and start developing those relationships mm -hmm. And there's some really good ways that you can um, kind of find groups that pertain to your practice area. So, for instance, if you're an estate planning attorney, um, you know, churches, I think nursing homes, mm -hmm. um, any place you're able to speak there. We'll talk about speaking in just a minute. Um, you know, if you're in family law, um, marriage counselors are great people to have in your pocket. Real estate agents, obviously, for um, real estate, you know, attorneys. Mm -hmm. So having those sort of networking connections are going to be huge. Again get their contact info and put on your email list to grow that. But um, yes, John hit the nail on the head. If you're able to do things in addition to the online marketing, it really makes it work better. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. 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 And I mean, business attorneys, there's entrepreneurial groups, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, yeah. CPAs can be a good source of business for tax attorneys. I mean, like it doesn't matter what your practice area is. You don't really have an excuse. There are groups of people out there that you can meet and you can really develop those relationships. And then, yeah, like she said, you can get them in your marketing funnel, have them, you know, create those consistent touch points and, and it can just drive a ton of business for you. All right. Halfway there. So next one, this one, I'm, this one's my bread and butter <laughs> publishing a book. Um, so oh, what do you, what do you have there, John? So, Oh. Here's a here's a nice little uh, thing for you guys. So this is our you? book, uh, the Ultimate Solo Lawyer's Guide to More Referrals and Better Clients. Um, we just published this. Um, really haven't even made an official announcement yet. So you all are pretty special in that you get the first crack at it. Um, it is a huge credibility booster mm -hmm. to publish a book. Um, you know, just you know the. Th the thought of someone walking into your office, seeing a copy of your book on your, on your, you know, reception desk or your personal desk, whatever it is, speaks volumes to, <laughs> volumes. <laughs> to your expertise and your credibility as the go-to attorney in your city. Um, and honestly, it's not even that hard to get a book published. You know, yeah. um, I personally have published 13 books, a um, bunch of nonfiction mm -hmm. stuff, a hiking guide, stuff like that. And mm -hmm. it is, it's really not difficult. I put this book together in a couple of weeks. And I say that not to make you think that I just, you know, slaved away at my desk and just wrote furiously mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks. Um, no, like what we did is we have a wealth of content on our website. Mm -hmm. And we were able to compile that and I added some paragraphs here and there to help everything flow. And we have a book now and it's a, you know, it's a big credibility booster and you can do the same, especially if you have like us, you have a ton of blog articles and resources and, and just a lot of pre-written information that you can, you know, spruce up a little bit and compile into a book. And so, um, you know, that is a, that is a huge thing just because we're in a digital age, people still like to read. Um, you know, you may not end up being a Stephen King or a John Grisham and make a ton of money off of it, mm -hmm. but 
it is a huge credibility booster and it is something that every attorney should do to just give them a leg up on their competition. Yeah, this is really, this is all him. I, and not a published author, so we're going to, we're going to let, I've contributed a little bit to that one. I'll yeah. say that. All right. Next one. Find your niche. Ah, find your niche. Yes. As some people say, find your niche, but those people are weird. Unless, niche. unless you're one of those people, in which case you're a pretty cool person. Love you. If you're one of those people, but it's niche. It's niche. Otherwise the blog that I wrote called niches get riches would make no sense. So find your niche. Um, people want to work with an expert. So, um, you know, generally speaking, the more focused you are, the better off. Um, and we, we understand the, the idea of wanting to be a general practitioner. Um, you know, if you're in a small town or maybe you honestly just don't want to turn away work, maybe you're not at that stage in your firm yet where you say, I want to, you know, I'm going to turn away business that's offering me, um, you know, offering to work with me. But with, as you see there, if you needed heart surgery, you're not going to go to a general practitioner. You're, you're going to a cardio cardiologist. That's hard, right? Cardio yeah, I think so. I think cardio you're going yeah. to a cardiologist um, because you want the absolute best to deal with something as delicate as heart surgery. The same thing goes for people who are in you know these situations where they're hiring a lawyer. They want someone they can trust wholeheartedly that they know know that specific niche niche of loss very very intimately. So. Um, even if it's, you know, maybe one or two practice areas that um, combine together, or even if it's a very like subset of a niche, we, we have some clients that are um, like very, very um, granular, I guess. Yeah. And they found a lot of success because once you're able to position yourself as, you know, the thought leader and the go-to expert in that field, people are willing to come to you and they're willing to pay top dollar for it. So yeah. That's why Starbucks can charge five bucks for a cup of coffee and well, Joe's breakfast diner down the street charges 50 cents. Yeah. There's a reason. Yeah. And, and to, to kind of, you know, take a different angle on this, you know, you niche down, um, not only do you end up, you know, doing the kind of work that you enjoy doing most, but if your marketing and everything is focused on attracting the right kinds of people, which is what we do, <laughs> Um, you know, you can ultimately raise yourself to that expert status. And then what that ultimately means is that you can charge higher rates for doing the work that you enjoy doing. Now, if your immediate thought to that is, well, wait, if I charge higher rates, then some people won't be able to afford me. And our answer to that is good. Yeah. I mean, if you had the choice to, you know, continue working, you know, 60, 70 hours a week, or if you could increase your rates, cut your workload in half, but still bring in the same amount of revenue, why wouldn't you do that? You know, unless you just, you know, hate your family and don't want to be around them. I mean, that's plausible, I guess. But, you know, so that's, that's the ultimate goal of niching down is, is doing the work that you want to do, working with the kind of people you want to work with, and then being able to charge more, make more, but also work less. Yeah, I think you hit it too. And like, if you have a specific practice area that you really enjoy doing work on, like, yes, pick that one. So you don't have to take something you just despise doing in order to, to pay the bills. So yeah, yeah. find your niche. Cool. Next one is get on the speaking circuit. Ooh. Okay. Um, I'll start. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Basically, getting on similar to you know how having a book published can showcase your expertise and your credibility. When you're a speaker, people just automatically like give you credibility. Um, like you guys are all watching us right here on this webinar. We could have absolutely no idea what we're talking about. There's a good chance we still don't. But you guys are all here. You're listening because we started a webinar and we're here talking about things. We made a presentation. Here we go. Um, we actually went to it was a it was a workshop um, last week yeah. with um, Danny Decker. Shout out Danny. Um, and he basically said the same thing. He said, you know, I'm up here with a microphone um, and I'm hosting this workshop and I could have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, but you're all going to listen to me because it makes me seem like I am authoritative and credible. So do that. Um, and yes, so here you can kind of go into yeah. the second part about how. Yeah. And, and so, you know, it, it really helps, you know, because, you know, I mean, people have no idea what the law is. I mean, you know, you know firsthand how complex it can be, you know, and, and 
as complex as it could be for you, it's even more confusing for everyone else. You know, people have no idea what goes into starting a business or, you know, what needs to be included in their estate plan or what they have to do to get divorced, anything like that. And so making yourself available to speak, whether you're, you know, doing a seminar, maybe you're, you know, like we mentioned earlier, like going to a church and kind of presenting on, you know, estate plans or at a nursing home, something like that, you know, whatever the case may be, if you have a captive audience, people are going to just think the world of you. And that opens up a ton of opportunities for you to gain that trust and to elevate yourself as the expert and the go-to to get, you know, to solve those problems for those people. Mm-hmm. All right. Get down to the end here. We're really good on time. Yeah, we are. <laughs> uh, all right. Number nine, open up your office. So. Yes. So, um, it's similar, it's kind of similar to the, the speaking part is, you know, if you're able to host things like these workshops or um, lunch and learns, we have a client who does one of these every month, then um, shout out Chris Clark. Yeah. We're doing lots of like plugs and shout outs. We, we wasn't planning to do that, but um, it's something like that, that again, if there's food involved, you're going to get people who are going to show up. It's definitely me. Let me know if you're hosting something where there's food involved. I will be there. Um, but you're also going to give them something of value more than just lunch, you're going to give them information that's helpful. They're going to end up giving you their contact information. I highly recommend anytime you do a speaking engagement or host something like this, do some sort of a giveaway. Maybe you have your book that you give out to a couple of people, yeah. but everybody can enter their business card um, and then they you know, can win something. You then take all that information and you or, you know, um, someone in your office or somewhere that you outsource, they can put it all into the, your um, like CRM, wherever you compile that information. Yeah. Um, but yes, just having a, a place where people can come and again, see a little bit behind the curtain, see that you guys are not that intimidating um, and that you're someone who just wants to offer valuable help and resources versus just, just take their money. Yeah. I, yeah. We know you guys don't want to do that. But again, before we both got into the like legal marketing realm, we, we had, you know, honestly, the uh, stereotypical idea of what attorneys were like, we, you know, that's what we yeah. thought. And after, you know, being here for a few years, we've, we've learned that's not the case, but a lot of people still think of attorneys with this very intimidating and harsh persona. Yeah. 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 And, and kind of going back to, you know, the early point of getting behind the scenes, if you're really proud of your office and you want to show it off, host a, host a monthly event, you know, with like a workshop or, you know, going back to networking. If you don't have any networking groups in your, in your town, make your office the central location for that, you know, invite business owners from all kinds of, you know, fields and industries to your office to have a networking event and you can build those relationships. And then, like she said, you get them in your marketing funnel and then all of a sudden you're the first person they think of when someone needs legal help. So, all right. Down to the last one, and it's not really a marketing (laughs) strategy, though it can be depending on what your personal role is as an attorney. Mm -hmm. Um, We have seen, you know, over the several years that we've been here, we've seen the true solo attorney who who does the legal work and also does the marketing, the bookkeeping, the reception, everything, Mm -hmm. and if we're all being honest with ourselves, you are not a marketer, you're not a bookkeeper, you're certainly not a receptionist. And if those are the roles that you are doing in your firm, you are the most overpaid of those. And you're also losing precious billable hours mm-hmm. to, you know, because you're taking care of that stuff. And so honestly, if there's one thing that you're gonna do in 2020, it is to delegate some of that stuff. Go back to being the attorney and nothing else. You know, um, obviously we're the marketing company. You know, you can hire us. You know, you can find uh, consulting companies who do bookkeeping. You have uh, there's uh, virtual assistants. So uh, there's a company that we recommend called Get Staffed Up. They provide virtual assistants who can answer your phones or just kind of do you know basic tasks that you know may suck up a lot of your time. And if you free up more time to do legal work, you should be able to recoup any expenses that come with hiring someone, you know, and we, I mean, I know how scary it is to add a salary to your payroll. I get it. But 
you know, that's one of those long-term investments that you make in your company and your firm to ultimately achieve the growth that you want. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and one of the biggest things that I kind of hear on the phone is just that, you know, I went to law school. I learned how to practice law. They, they don't teach you guys how to do the marketing, the business side, the, I mean, most people know how to answer a phone pretty well, although you would be surprised. You would be surprised. Um, but you know, you guys need to focus on the legal work and like he said, like he said, the bill hours part. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, that is it. Um, thank you all for sticking through it. Um, if you want help with some of these strategies, we're giving, uh, all of you who are attending this, uh, a special offer. If you book your call today, we will add the booking link here to the Q and a section. Uh, we will also include it in, uh, the recap email that'll go out here shortly. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you book a call today and then you decide to enroll with us, uh, you'll receive $500 off your first month. Um, that, that you just have to book the call today. You yeah. don't have to have the call today. Cause so. they're with me and like, yeah. I, I can't have a lot. Like, and I'm yeah. sorry, you know, so it will be with me. Don't let that deter you from scheduling a call. If you really just hated hearing me talk today, then okay. oh, no, I'm, I'm not offended if you don't book a call, but, um, yeah. but yeah, um, I'd love to talk to you. Um, yeah. So we will conversation. So. Yeah. I will send that out soon. Um, if any of you have any questions, um, now's the time to uh, send it to us. Um, we would also really love your feedback on mm -hmm. this. So um, if you would like to reach out to us, uh, you can send an email to Jana, J-A-N-A -A at spotlightbranding.com. You can send an email to me, John, J-O-H-N at spotlightbranding.com. Let us know what you thought about the webinar. Um, we definitely plan on doing more this year and we would love to keep having you come back um, and you know, spend some time with us and learn some, learn, learn some more about marketing. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so uh, we're just going to open it up for questions. And uh, if you all have any, uh, feel free to, let me see here. Yeah. Yeah. Feel free to fire away. Yeah. We wrapped up a little bit earlier than expected, but yeah. you know what? You guys have some, some time now you can go and give you plenty of time for questions. Yes. Lots we, of time. For questions. We know you would have some probably. And if not, that's okay. That's good. Yeah. We'll give it just a little bit. Yeah, we'll give you a few minutes.